Hello everybody. So for this video, we're gonna switch back to this 2024 Subaru Ascent. Uh, Cause I've been waiting to make this video for you guys to explore all the safety features of this car and how some of them are a little bit over the top. And the reason why I couldn't make this video right away is because, I mean, this is our family mobile. And every time, you know, we drive this car is when I'm with my wife or and or with my kids so I can't really you know be myself obviously I can't have the wife wait while I do this so I had to kind of wait for the opportunity and today the opportunity finally came I'm, I'm by myself I have this car and I have a pretty long highway trip coming up so I can kind of show you and explore more of like the driving this vehicle and kind of some of the feedback that I can give you as an owner of this car and how I think the manufacturers, not just the Subaru, obviously, um, but how manufacturers go crazy for some of their safety stuff. And I understand why. I mean, you know, one manufacturer comes up with safety stuff. Others got to beat it or at least match it. Otherwise, you know, you have no marketing material. But as a user, right, as the end user of the product, uh, sometimes you just got to take it down a notch and you know I don't think I ever like explored this angle of this car before and it kind of looks nice I don't know I I, I grow to like it I know I criticize some of the stuff like the uh, you know like not having fog lights on a premium trim I understand they have to leave something for the you know for the upper trim levels I guess but I mean overall I guess the looks the looks are good I mean I, I love the car and by the way we love this car overall um, I, we, we both believe it's a good purchase. We already have, um, like what, around 1,500 miles. Let's see. Up 1,478 miles, all right? So, so let's kind of, so this might be a bit of a longer video than, than average. Uh, but here, here's another interesting thing. And I just, I literally, I just discovered this right before I started filming this video. What happened? Where is my climate control? Where is my radio or navigation or everything? It's gone. Now, it's not broken, but I saw this and I was like, hold for off. I mean, usually we would just turn the volume down. And I'm like, hold for off? What does that even mean? Because it's like you have hold here with a little note symbol, and then we have hold here for the power. So I held it and everything turned off. And I was like, uh oh, so that's how must, you know, an average user feel when your screen goes out. Well, guess what? You can't control climate. You can't control anything. You have these, but good luck turning it on and off. Now, uh, when I did held it, it did give me a little warning and I'll demonstrate it. And it did tell me that if you want to use climate control, just touch the screen. Here you go. Press and hold the volume knob to turn the screen back on. So here is my, oh, here is my climate control that I can turn on, turn off, get my heated seats going, you know, oh, oh. <laughs> so it's on a timer, so that's kind of interesting. It's on a timer, and even if you're pressing it, it shuts itself off. That's odd. Come on, man. What happens when you head home? Okay, so when you hit home, it turns itself back on. Okay. Let's see, so let's kind of do this again. All right, here you go. Screen audio powering off, press and hold the volume knob, turn the screen, top right climate control, touch the screen any, anywhere. Touch the climate control, okay. So there you go, that's kind of what, what we're facing is. But imagine not having this feature and the screen burns out. I mean, somebody hits it with a, with a fist or something or breaks the screen, nothing. <laughs> nothing happens so that kind of sucks now i wonder what happens if you start pressing these okay so it does turn back on and then hold the volume knob again okay or i guess you can press the home oh, okay i like all the settings uh that they used to disappear and then what happens when you hold here okay all right so you have this balance fader yeah okay equalizer i guess yeah i don't know I don't think I was really playing with this, so. Okay, so basically it's the same control that was like if you go into the settings, I guess, and see, it's kind of laggy a little bit. 
Oh, here. Sorry. I should probably sound. Yeah, so I guess like some of these settings. <laughs> also, this is kind of interesting. Do you really need 38 SMS readout volume settings? <laughs> Who thought that this would be a good idea? I mean, you have 38 different ways of setting up the volume control. <laughs> or here, incoming call volume. Now, that, I guess, either myself or my wife, I don't know, one of us probably cranked it up via the volume knob here. Oh, no, that doesn't... Oh, nope, nope, can't, can't have the copyright stuff. So, yeah, so I don't know about this whole thing. <laughs> anyway, so that's kind of, you know, so that, that was a weird way of kind of, you know, doing this. I guess they, they realized that the screen is way too bright, might be a little bit overpowering for some. But I can also tell you this, right here in the settings, we don't have it cranked all the way up. We have it one notch below that, and that's what also controls the brightness of the gauges and the screen because yeah at nighttime it is it is way too bright uh for you to uh you know for you to comfortably drive like it, it affects it affects your eyes now it's also worth noting that this car once again being a premium trim not the highest level it's the second one from the bottom it doesn't have this this little hump that you probably see in uh, some of the upper trim levels the eyesight monitor is what you have basically it scans the driver's eyes and if you start moving uh, it away it will start warning you and beeping and probably these little lights will go off that's in the dash i don't know if you guys can see the little lights there they are i mean we'll see them probably as we as we take this car for a drive so that so at least my car is missing that but my car is not missing pretty much anything else uh and and here is where i wanted to kind of focus um on this Oh, but you know what? Never mind. I'm sorry. Before we, we, we go any further, I also wanted to bring this up. So check this out, right? So you have 370 miles to the empty with an arrow pointing to the to the gas station symbol. And then you have this, right? Your fuel, your, your full to empty with a little arrow pointing to the right where the gas gap is. I kid you not, <laughs> there's been a couple times, the first couple fill-ups, I don't know why I was not looking at this little symbol I was looking at this little symbol and I pulled up on the wrong side of the gas station. Now, right now I realize that that's, that that is not correct, but at the end of the day, it's like, why, why are you trying to mess me up? Now, maybe it's just me. I get it. Maybe that was not meant to trick me, but it's like, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. Like you could probably like at a glance, right? Like you're not really studying this thing so yes i pulled up on the wrong thinking that it's this symbol the one that's pointing to the left to the driver's side and this one versus to the right i just think they should have made this the same way anyway so now let's go back to all the safety stuff now i'm old enough to remember that my first car the only safety thing it had was the airbag and this the safety belt that was the only safety equipment on my first car which was 1997 chevrolet cavalier now, the current cars obviously have a ton of stuff. And just so that we're on the same page, I'm not against all the safety stuff. No, I, I think it's good. I think airbags are good. I think seat belts are good. I also use the blind spot monitor, the little symbol that, uh, well, you guys can't see it now, but it does light up uh, with a little, um, the little light bulb here. I like that stuff. I love the backup camera equipment right here. Uh, even though I find it pretty strange that it's only half of the screen, but it's fine. It's good. Here, let me let me pull my little safety thing. There you go. Oh, oh, oh look at that! Look at that! Here's another. What is this? This is the the rear something. This is one of these. So you got the parking assist, and you have the RAB Rab, which is kind of funny because in Russian. Arab means slave. <laughs> so this is this is a slave on. I don't remember what this. Can you turn it off? Oh, okay, you can. But it's like rear active backing assist. So basically, it will tell you when somebody, you know, when you're backing out and somebody is in in your way. Okay. I don't know why the X mode shows up. Okay, on, and then it turned on the little X mode symbol there. Okay. I'm not sure why it's why is it being shown here oh look at that there you go the backup assist 
Oh, that's actually uh, another Subaru Outback. You see that? So yeah, it's good. It's fine. The parking sensor is fine. Now this bottom portion is actually in the higher trim levels. You have a little other picture. Now this one doesn't have, but it has so much other crap on here. So it's like you have extra stuff on the higher trim levels that actually tell you how close you are to another uh, vehicle or an object. So I'll post a picture to kind of show you there. So you have. So I'm missing that feature too. But you have the backup camera. I love it too. Here, let's get it back in park. And let's get it off of the park parking brake. Oh, focus, focus. There you go. So yeah, so I'm not against it. I also think that the smart cruise control, that when you turn it on, you know, you can control it. I think it's a great invention right here. All the camera stuff, I already covered all the beeps and all that, and you know, and the lane keep assist. I am kind of a little on the fence about the whole lane keep assist. That's why here in the settings, uh, I turned it off um, here driving assistance pre-collision braking okay maybe here lane departure warning I just have it for the buzzer only otherwise it beeps way too much and if you turn it off I think I already showed you that you get almost what looks like a maintenance light on which I hate to see so I just have it so it buzzes so you can't really turn it off um, yeah rear vehicle detection Oh yeah, R, so that's RAD, that's RVD, Rear Vehicle Detection. Oh, okay, yeah, so that turns that on. All right, so I'm not gonna rehash my other video. So, so there you go, so there's a lot of different stuff in here. But the one thing that I feel like it's probably the worst feature is this. And I'm gonna show you why. It's this active steering assist. Now, when we get on the highway, I will demonstrate, and if it acts in any way, shape, or form like it has before when I try to use it for real, I think this feature is dangerous. And I'll show you why in real life. Um, now, I'm not gonna try and plan to get into an accident, but I feel like somebody using this feature right here, I think you can get into an accident using this safety feature. You know, and once again, it will have to, we'll have to get on the highway and set the cruise control to, to get why. Now, another thing, that now this car does not have is the button, the blank, whoops, sorry, the little bag, I don't know if my wife carries something for the kids, I don't know what that is, is this feature right here. That's your uh, 360 degree um, camera feature. Now here's also another thing that I think it's a little, maybe over the top, is you know for you to be able to see the 360 degree view of your vehicle you know up front and the side and the back although the back does have its own camera when you back it up i don't know if that's necessary because ultimately i mean you have to have you know kind of a little bit common sense to look around your vehicle now all these things that the yeah, the blind spot here i guess i can start heading out the blind spot monitoring and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, the, these are good features. Once again, I'm not against them, but the more and more I think about it, it's like, at what point do you have to just know how to drive and pay attention and also be responsible for your actions? <laughs> because ultimately, if you crash with any of these safety features, I mean, I'm sure there's a tiny fine print somewhere in the manual that will tell you, hey, <laughs> you know, shit happens. <laughs> you, you, you know, your active, whatever, your cruise control that was supposed to keep an eye on the car in front, hey, that failed or something happened, that's on you. This crash is definitely on you. You have to pay attention. Uh, the fact that even with this active steering activated, it, it will ask you to put your hand on the steering wheel or keep it on the steering wheel. If you let it go, and even if it steers perfectly, it's gonna start blinking, it's gonna shut itself off because I guess nobody wants to uh, be responsible for you hitting somebody. All right, well, enough of me talking. Let's go on the highway and let's uh, kind of show you what I mean. All righty, folks, so we are on the highway. Oh, focus, focus. Oh, it doesn't wanna focus. All right, here we are. We are in focus. Here we are on the highway, so we're gonna set the cruise control. You can kind of see it right there. For some reason, it doesn't wanna focus. We're gonna turn it on. It's gonna light up the little green light, which you guys can probably see when it focuses. And that just means that it's on. It's tracking the car in front. It's keeping up the 71 miles that I set it at. And I'm gonna set the cruise, the, not the cruise, the, the active steering assist. 
which basically means that if I just, I need to hold the steering wheel. I, don't, I guess the capacitive thing is somewhere in there. So if I just let it go, it, it will, you know, like here, like let's, let's demonstrate, I guess, because I've done it. Now, it, it is steering. It is steering. So I'm not, now, also, this is kind of weird. I'm, I, I'm not holding onto the steering wheel. Oh, there you go. There you go. So it's telling me you got to hold the steering wheel. Yep, hold it here. Otherwise, I'm turning off. And this is where it starts to get kind of hairy. So I am holding the steering wheel. The steering wheel is turning on its own. I'm not... By the way, if I start to fight it, it will deactivate itself. But here's the problem with this particular active steering assist. It doesn't drive the car straight. It bounces. And, and I don't know how to show this to you guys, but it bounces from right to left, from right to left. And I'm going to try and hold the camera in hopes that you guys will be able to see it. But you have to feel it. Like right now, it's, it's pulling to the left and the car is starting to correct itself to the right. Now it's starting to pull to the right and then it starts to turn. Now, this is where, you know, that one story that I told you guys, it got a little dangerous because you have cars on both sides and I'm sorry in advance for it not wanting to focus really quickly. But, you know, I'm not going super fast. I mean, I'm going 71. And when you are driving kind of in, like right now, I'm specifically driving in the middle, right? I could drive all the way to the left or to the right to kind of minimize that. But when you start getting close to the car to the right or to the left, the actions of this button becomes kind of jerky. And it will try to like get its, like get out from the dangerous situation, but it will swing pretty quickly. And if you're not prepared for this, you're gonna shit your pants. I'm not kidding you. So that's why I think this is dangerous. Now, if you start to fight the steering wheel, it it will uh, turn itself off. So at least they do have, like right now, like it just pulled pretty, pretty quickly to the left. <laughs> I don't know why, it doesn't have to. Why can't you stay in the middle, car? You have to stay in the middle. That is your That is your job. If you can't, let me drive right? The Jesus taking the wheel, I mean, it is scary. I'm telling you. <laughs> now, it is not made to be a, um, you know, self-driving feature that everybody is going for. Um, but, you know, it's kind of a, it's, it's, it's an attempt, right? To turn uh, this car into semi, semi self-driving, but I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding you not. I am scared of this feature. And I believe it should be recalibrated and it should be fixed because ultimately, like I feel a lot more comfortable turning it off. And yeah, and just steering. This feature, the smart cruise control works perfectly. It keeps an eye on the road. It keeps an eye on a car in front. I mean, I shouldn't say on the road. It keeps an eye on a car in front. It self brakes, uh, which is good. It will come to a full stop if needed. Uh, and also it will do the pre-collision, uh, sorry guys, yeah, there you go, it will do the pre-collision thing. But this active uh, steering assist, I'm telling you, I am, I'm not a fan and I think it's dangerous. Only because I've seen what it does and uh, trust me, I do not want to recreate it. Because with all the safety stuff, that is, um, it's kind of the car wants to keep you safe, but at the same time, like here, like right now, the car is breaking on its own, which is, you know, which is what it should be doing. And it does it really well. Yep, now it's accelerating, very good. So this active steer, once again, this is the one feature that I think is kind of dangerous because you trust the car to do the right thing and yes, you're supposed to be holding onto the steering wheel, uh, but here, like I turn it back on right now, it is over correcting all the freaking time. And and it's a little, oh, oh, here we go. It just did that and I try to correct itself and it's fighting me. So yeah, like there's no way that I'm gonna trust, um, you know, the car to, to do the steering. There's just something, uh, there's just something about it that unsettling for me. Uh, maybe if you're on a wide open highway and you have nobody around you, it will, but keep in mind, this car can get pretty close to you. 
this car can get pretty close to you. Now, if you, you know, if you're a human being steering, you can, number one, you can kind of correct it yourself. But when you have the car try to correct it for you and it starts bouncing from line to line and you have no idea how close you're gonna get to the other car before it self-corrects, that's why this feature, off and should never, and by the way, I turned the cruise control off too so I could be in full control. Yeah, I don't know how the people with these self-driving Teslas, and I know we hear stories about people getting in car accidents all the time with these self-driving features, and yeah, the manufacturer won't do anything for you because supposedly you're supposed to watch the car, right? No, no manufacturer's gonna pay you for your damage or for your hospital bill or for your funeral for that matter. Uh, but that is what I'm what I'm saying is like I would think three times before even if I drive one of the fanciest cars with the self-driving that's been advertised up and down I'm telling you th this thing is scary <laughs> and this is from somebody who's been driving for at this point in my life like 24 years I've been behind the wheel of a car I hate flying I mean I flew but I, I would love to drive across the country and there's something to, beautiful about driving a car like it's pleasure for me so yeah smart cruise all the way love that feature blind spot monitors sure backup camera sure the 360 cameras i really couldn't care less i don't know why can't you just look around and also the the blind spot thing like these things that uh that light up i mean it, it's good but whenever i change lanes i look like i swivel my head left and right uh, so I'm not gonna trust the little light bulb. Uh, now it's good, I mean, light bulb keeps you safe and kind of gives you a little extra check, great. But there, there, you, we should not dumb ourselves down with all the safety stuff that, you know, the little cameras give us right there. And we should kind of still remember how to drive. Uh, that's kind of my thing. Maybe it's an old guy already. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 uh, I'm not 40 yet, so maybe I can't call myself old yet. Yeah, so that's the feature that I wanted to show you guys. I mean, look, otherwise, I mean, the car has been great. I don't want to bore you to death. It's the same old thing. Still roomy, still gives us very comfortable ride. Probably by the time I get home, it's going to hit 1,500 miles. Um, yeah, like the screen, yeah, you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt. Let's pray to God that, it, that we will get rid of this car before the screen breaks or before it burns out because otherwise we're in trouble. Uh, yeah. I mean, I highly recommend this car, but uh, once again, few things, especially this this guy right there, yeah. I was gonna put like a red sticker on it. Now my wife is not gonna use it, but once again, I tested it out already several times and yeah, it's dangerous, I'm telling you. All right, everybody, we'll see you with the next one.